Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is the day before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring except fight fans like us. Let me wish everyone a very happy holiday season. Let me also give you some ammunition because I know many of you are going to find yourself at some holiday dinner sitting next to Uncle Jerome or Auntie Keisha or somebody else fill in the blank right and they're gonna be talking to you about who was the best fighter of the decade and who had the best fight of the decade and stuff like that and you're gonna be sitting there and you're gonna be arguing and there are gonna be a lot of fights in your head and a lot of memories and stuff like that well, let me offer one man's opinion. Looking back on the teens, given that 2020s in a few days, right, on what was the best fight event of the decade. Let me back up a little bit. We've had great matchups, right? Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao, for example. A few years too late, but still two of the defining fighters of our time. We've had fewer great fights. Right? Canelo versus Golovkin both fights, for example. Right? Errol Spence versus Kell Brook. I thought that was a whale of a fight. You can tell us about other fights you thought that were great in the comment section of this video. But we've had even fewer great fight events, right? Where the fight delivered and the buildup and the event delivered. The kind of thing where you remember the buildup, the crowd, the fighters, the venue, the moments, years later. Now here... I want you to just quickly jot down, before I go further, the fight events of the last decade that you feel delivered. I deliberately haven't put this fight in the title of this video, right? Because I want people to have an opportunity to list their own fight before they hear my opinion, right? Let me give it now. For me, the best fight event of the last decade featured a young heavyweight champion who we quite frankly had doubts about right he had won the Olympic gold medal but he had done so in his home country before his fans and the fight was close Right? We give him an A for effort, but we thought, wow, would this outcome have been the same had he been fighting in some other country, before different fans, before a media where he wasn't the hometown favorite? To get the title, he had beaten Charles Martin. And let's be clear here, Martin was one of the weaker recent heavyweight champions in recent memory. Right? He got the title when the guy he was fighting suffered a bodily injury during the fight. Right? It wasn't like Martin himself opened up and hurt the guy and finished the guy. No, the guy finished himself. And of course, at the time of the fight I'm talking about here, this young heavyweight champion had never gone the distance in a fight. Now in the post Lennox Lewis era, Ukrainian brothers had held the heavyweight title for years. Then along came Tyson Fury and he flamed out. At the time he could not handle success. So here was an unbeaten Englishman who seemed to be wearing the crown 
without ever having taken a final exam. Something just seemed unsettled. Something just seemed unproven. So along comes former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko to give this young, untested, but unbeaten champion a final exam. So on April the 29th, 2017, when young champion Anthony Joshua entered the ring at Wembley Stadium, we, fight fans all over the globe, as well as the more than 80,000 people in the stadium, did not quite know what to expect. We just didn't. AJ's ring walk was a long one that featured fireworks. As he was entering the ring, I can tell you, I was thinking to myself, man, I just hope this guy doesn't get embarrassed. Whatever happens in this fight, Right? Whatever happens in this fight, I just want this guy's accomplishments to be remembered in a positive light. Right? He's entering the ring against Vladimir Klitschko. Many guys got blown out by Klitschko, looked bad in Klitschko fights. Right? Alexander Povetkin hits the canvas, looks terrible, gets up keeps running inside, his reputation has never been restored. Ray Austin, you remember how that fight went? You have the famous David Hay bad toe Klitschko fight. Right? Tony Thompson looked great in the first fight. The second fight, Klitschko decided to leave no doubt. Tony ends up in a corner, never makes it out of the corner. Is battered is blown out, looks intimidated. So as Anthony Joshua was entering the ring and the crowd was roaring, and understand, that crowd was something Joshua had built himself. Right By the time he fights Klitschko, Anthony Joshua is already box office gold. He already has multiple belts. He has united the United Kingdom around him. He is the box office king of the heavyweight division. So as he's entering the ring, I just thought, man, I just hope when this guy leaves the ring, he'll be able to do so with his head held high. I still remember that today right more than two years later so let me just say by the time AJ gets in the ring all of the uncertainty for me personally made it hard to breathe right I personally expected AJ to lose his title this was a big event with a lot of uncertainty and the buildup continued in the ring. And it was natural. Right? It was the kind of buildup once in a while you get in boxing inadvertently. In Vladimir Klitschko's corner was his older brother, former heavyweight champion Vitaly Klitschko. This was not a photo op. You literally looked in the ring and you saw the old guard on one side. It extended out of the ring. And then you saw the new guard across the ring from them. Right? Let me just say, so this fight held a lot of promise. The question was, is Anthony Joshua legit? Another question was, is Vladimir Klitschko 
past his expiration date because he had looked bad against Tyson Fury. Right? Tyson Fury is dancing around. Tyson Fury is openly mocking him in that fight. And then, of course, there was a lot of time out of the ring. So we weren't certain whether Vladimir Klitschko was still Vladimir Klitschko. That question, too, lingered in the air. So let's talk about the fight itself. For all this tension, for all this uncertainty, for all this promise, this fight delivered. I encourage people to go back and look at it. It is one of the most important fights of several years. Klitschko comes out against his former sparring partner on his front foot. Right? Much more aggressive than Klitschko normally is. He backs up AJ. AJ then is on his back foot. Now we just saw AJ on his back foot against Anthony Joshua. I'm just telling you in 2017, seeing AJ on his back foot was breathtaking. Right? He hadn't been in against an old master like this ever in his pro career. Right? A guy who you knew had punching power. To see AJ actually back away from the pocket was jarring. Because AJ was usually the hunter in fights. People were typically afraid of him. They were the ones moving away from the pocket. Right? The older guys he had fought up until that point. Kevin Johnson and stuff like that. You didn't feel they had the punch to stop AJ. They had to get defensive. Here you had the young, untested guy. In front of his home fans backing away from a guy in his mid to late 30s. Well, let me just say, Joshua then starts to show, and this was also shocking, that he could box with Vladimir Klitschko. In other words, the fight starts, Klitschko moves forward, you get the feeling Klitschko feels he can walk down Joshua. Joshua then starts to back up, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, this... Joshua backing up? What? You know, what's going on here? Then Joshua starts to box. And you start asking yourself, who won that round? It's competitive. In other words, this was, you know, a house of mirrors. You weren't sure what room you were in. You thought, what, what the hell's going to happen next? Let me also say that it felt like you were watching Russian Roulette. Because as they were boxing, you understood these were two very heavy punchers. You felt the threat of storm clouds on the horizon. You knew some big punch could land at any time to knock down either guy. And then in the fifth round, lightning strikes. AJ knocks down Vladimir Klitschko. Right? You saw it. You thought, oh my goodness. I remember thinking at the time of the knockdown, I thought, wow, I hope Vladimir doesn't get embarrassed here. Right? I didn't want to see Vladimir treated like Larry Holmes was treated by Mike Tyson. Right? That first knockdown comes around when it comes in the Mike Tyson fight. I think Holmes makes it to the fourth round or something. Here Vladimir Klitschko makes it to the fifth round. Gets dropped by AJ. But then while I'm wondering whether Vladimir Klitschko is going to be able to leave the ring with his dignity, Klitschko gets up and he looks pissed. He actually starts to get aggressive with Anthony Joshua after getting up off the canvas. So then we get to the sixth round. And let me just say, there have been tremendous rounds this last decade. Tremendous rounds. 
But I'll just say, the sixth round of this fight is going to be one that's discussed for decades going forward. Right? It is that kind of round. Right? It's controversial rounds like this that lead to several questions that could fill a barbershop's time for hours. Right? People are going to be talking about this. You're at the bar, you could literally spend, you know, a Friday night talking with other fight fans about what happened in the sixth round of Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko shows you why he was heavyweight champion for several years. This is one round after he himself getting dropped. Right? He then drops Anthony Joshua. It is jarring. We have not seen professional fighter Anthony Joshua on the canvas before. Joshua is on the canvas. When Joshua gets up, he's badly hurt. He's in survival mode. This isn't the fifth round where Klitschko gets up off the canvas upset and ready to show you he's upset. No, in this round, Anthony Joshua gets up. He's groggy, folks. He's hurt. The worst part of the whole thing is he's still in against Vladimir Klitschko. When he gets up, I remember looking at it and saying, wow, his title run is done. That was my thought process. Now we'll be debating <laughs> what happens next. Was Vladimir Klitschko afraid to jump in because of his memories of the fifth round? Right? Understand, Vladimir himself had been dropped just the round before. Was that why Vladimir Klitschko was tentative? Did he fear Joshua? Was this one of those things where you knock the man down and then Klitschko knows Joshua has power? Thinks to himself, hey, if I run in recklessly here, I could get hit with a counter something. And dropped. Is that why he didn't run in? Let's offer some other scenarios because this is really a Zapruder type round, isn't it? Was Vladimir Klitschko afraid to jump in because he feared himself? Let's remember Vladimir Klitschko's in cruise control earlier in his career at home against Ross Purity. He runs out of gas. Gets stopped. His first loss. Let's remember Vladimir Klitschko is beating Lehman Brewster later. He runs out of gas. He gets stopped. Right? Having overextended himself in the past against Purity and Brewster did Vladimir Klitschko fear overextending himself against Joshua? Right? The fifth round had big moments. Here in the sixth round, he's dropped Joshua. Did he think to himself, this is only the sixth round? I have to pace myself because of problems he had in the past. Again, did Vladimir Klitschko fear himself? when he had a vulnerable Joshua in front of him. Another possible scenario. At this point, we should be bringing in Oliver Stone, right? Did Vladimir Klitschko decide not to jump in? Because he felt that the fight was over, whether or not he jumped in. Let's remember, Anthony Joshua had never gone the distance. A mic in the corner caught his brother Vitaly telling him this guy has too many muscles. 
he's going to tire out. Right? Did Vladimir Klitschko think at that point that it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to walk out the ring as the heavyweight champion? Right? Did he think that Joshua just couldn't recover and that he would be able to just take out Joshua in the round after that or the round after that in the normal course without taking the risks of overextending himself. Now all I can say is all of this action the fifth round, the sixth round Klitschko on his front foot rounds one and two all of it takes place in the first six rounds of this fight, the first half of this fight. By the time you get to the end of the sixth round you understand for all the hype of the event the fight itself was actually exceeding it. You saw the sixth round and before you saw the rest of the fight you understood this sixth round is going to be talked about. This sixth round is one of the most consequential and one of the most memorable rounds of the last several years in the heavyweight division. Well the fight continues a chess match breaks out. By the start of the 11th round, one judge has Vladimir Klitschko ahead. I admit, I had Vladimir Klitschko ahead too. The two other judges had Anthony Joshua ahead by two and three rounds. So we're in the 11th round. You understood that this fight was on its way to a decision that was going to be hotly debated. You knew going into the 11th round that unless something happened in the 11th or 12th rounds, you were going to have a group out there that believed Joshua won the fight. You were going to have a group out there that believed Vladimir Klitschko won the fight. And both groups were going to be talking about that 6th round. So then, of course, in the 11th round, Joshua lands the uppercut to end all uppercuts. You know, every time I see Vladimir Klitschko, I'm amazed that his head is still attached to his body. That uppercut was bananas. It was crazy. It has to be included in any compilation of the great uppercuts in history. Right? Anthony Joshua just pulls out an uppercut. It just stops. It just stops. Vladimir Klitschko. You knew the fight was never going to be the same again after that. There wasn't even the thought about Vladimir Klitschko coming back from that punch. Now he tries. Klitschko hangs in there in the 11th round. But it's too much. He's too hurt. The curtain comes down. The fight ends. Anthony Joshua has proven himself. The trajectory of the heavyweight division has changed. The old guard has been beaten. Understand, beating Vladimir Klitschko is like beating Real Madrid. In the United States, it's like beating the New York Yankees. Right? Or the New England Patriots. You have earned it. Right? When they talk about having been tested, you've just passed your final exam. Right? It was a great fight. Both guys, both guys lifted their profiles. Right? We think back to the fight and it's like, yeah, Vladimir Klitschko showed up and dropped a guy much younger than him. We talk about the times Anthony Joshua was tested. Yes, Andy Ruiz beat Anthony Joshua, but in the Joshua story, even if it has several more years and several more chapters to go, 
that sixth round will always have its own special place, its own special chapter. Also, the fact that Anthony Joshua knocks down Vladimir Klitschko before that. The fact that Anthony Joshua gets off the canvas looks like he has nothing left in that sixth round and survives the round and then goes about defending his titles is just what makes this event, in my opinion, the boxing event of the last 10 years, right? Yes, there were big fights. Yes, those fights had a lot of meaning. Some of those fights were spectacular. Let's just remember the scale of this fight. Right? The old former champion who had been champion for several years returning to the sport to take on the new champion with multiple belts at stake. And the fight was so big. More than 80,000 people are in the arena. And of course, the pay per view was Bonzo in Europe. Right, This, to me, was the fight event of the last decade. If you have a different fight event of the last decade in mind, I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Tell us about that fight. Tell us why it was special. Tell us why you believe that fight is going to be remembered in history. Let me just say this too. Vladimir Klitschko walks away from the sport, at least as of this video on December 24th, 2019. In boxing, you never know, right? I saw Henry Maskey out the ring. I would have sworn he was retired. He came back something like 10 years later. And by the way, won that fight. Food for thought. Look that one up. So here, Vladimir Klitschko walks away from the sport. As I look back, I'm just thinking, my God, what a great performance to leave on. Right? This guy gave his all against an unbeaten multiple heavyweight champion. Right? And what's amazing in boxing is when you're in a big moment and you make it memorable, even when you lose, it raises your profile. Were Vladimir Klitschko to come back to the sport, he'd have to give a hell of a performance to beat the impression he left the sport with. And as for Anthony Joshua, all I can say is, you know a guy's character when he's tested, when he's down on his luck. This guy gets knocked down, gets off the canvas. There was a lot of time left on the clock in that sixth round. Just ask yourself, what kept him going? Right? He's there. Looks like he's on fumes. Right? You, you got the feeling that the guy was barely hanging on. He hung on. He goes on to win the fight. Five-star performance makes this fight hard to top, at least to me. This fight's clearly one of the defining fights I have seen in my boxing fan career. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Tell Auntie Keisha I said hi. Happy holidays. Thanks for stopping by.